welcome back to Mediclass. Today we shall learn the basics of tooth nomenclature. Now what are the basic terminologies used in dental anatomy? You must have heard words like cusp, fossa, line angles, point angles, mesial, distal. So let's learn about it in detail in this video. Before that, let's see what are parts of tooth, surfaces of anterior and posterior teeth, point angles, line angles and landmarks of anterior and posterior teeth. Let's start with parts of tooth. In this picture, you can see a tooth. This is cut into cross section and this is how it appears internally. This is the crown portion and this is the root portion. The clinical crown is the part of the tooth that is visible in the oral cavity and the root is present in the bone. The outer covering of the crown is known as enamel. This is the hardest substance in the human body consisting of more than 96% of inorganic material. The second layer is the dentine. It is the major bulk of the tooth present in both crown and root. Cementum. It is the hard avascular tissue that covers the root portion and this is the pulp. It is a connective tissue that carries blood and nerve supply to the tooth. Moving on, the surfaces of teeth. First we will see the surfaces of mandibular teeth. Now this red portion is the lip, this pink portion is the cheek, these are the teeth and this is the tongue. So the surface towards the lip is known as the labial surface. The surface towards the cheek is known as the buccal surface and when we talk about the labial and the buccal surfaces together, it is called as facial surfaces. The surface facing the tongue is known as lingual surface. The surfaces of premolars and molars that come in contact with the opposite teeth while the jaws close is called as occlusal surface. The surface of the teeth facing towards the adjoining teeth in the same dental arch is called as the proximal surface. Proximal surfaces can either be mesial or it can be distal. The mesial surfaces are towards the midline and the distal surfaces are away from the midline. Moving on to the surfaces of the maxillary teeth. The only difference here is the palate. So this is the labial surface, this is the buccal surface and the surface facing to the palate is known as the palatal surface. Now let's talk in detail about surfaces of the anterior teeth. This is the labial surface. So when a person smiles, the surface that we see is the labial surface. This is the mesial surface as we discussed towards the midline. This is the incisal surface. This is the distal surface that is away from the midline. And this is the lingual surface that is towards the tongue portion. Moving on to the surfaces of the posterior teeth. Facial surface. Distal surface. Occlusal surface. Lingual surface. And mesial surface. Now let's see how the division of the teeth is done into thirds. First we'll talk about the anterior teeth. Now let's talk about anterior teeth. This is the crown portion, this is the root portion and the line separating the crown and the root is known as the cervical line. Towards the incisal end, this is the incisal third, this is the middle third and this is the cervical third. Now when we cut the root into three parts, Towards the cervical region, it is the cervical third, the middle third and this is the apex of the tooth, so this is the apical third. Now this is a proximal surface. When you divide this into three parts, this is the labial third towards the lip, the middle third and the lingual third towards the tongue. Now let's see the posterior teeth. The occlusal third, the middle third and towards the cervical line is the cervical third. This is the mesial third the middle third and the distal third. The proximal surface, the lingual third towards the tongue, the middle third and the buccal third towards the cheek. Now let's see what are line angles of the anterior teeth. The junction of the two surfaces of the crown is known as line angle. So this is the labio-incisal line angle, the mesiolingual line angle, the mesiolabial line angle, lingual incisal line angle, distolingual line angle and distobuccal line angle. So there are six line angles in the anterior tooth. 
Moving on to the line angles of the posterior two. Mesioocclusal line angle, mesiolingual line angle, mesiobuccal line angle, buccooclusal line angle, linguoclusal line angle, distolingual line angle, distobuccal line angle and distooclusal line angle. So there are seven line angles in the posterior teeth. Now moving on to the point angles. What are point angles? The junction of three surfaces as of the crown of a tooth are known as point angles. The mesiolabial incisal point angle, the mesiolingual incisal point angle, distolabio incisal point angle, and distolinguo incisal point angle. Example: There are three surfaces in this point angle: the mesial, the labial, and incisal. Together, form the mesiolabio incisal point angle. Now, moving on to the point angles of the posterior teeth: mesiolinguo occlusal point angle, mesiobuccal occlusal point angle. distolingual occlusal point angle and distobuccal occlusal point angle so there are four point angles in the posterior teeth what are the anatomical landmarks as you can see there are many so let's go through them one by one now what is a cusp it is an elevation on the crown portion of a tooth making up the divisional part of the occlusal surface so these are the elevations in the crown portion which makes up the divisional part of the occlusal surface Next is the tubercle. It is a smaller elevation as compared to the cusp on some portion of the crown produced by extra formation of enamel. Next is cingulum. It is the lingual lobe of an anterior tooth. It makes up the bulk of the cervical third of the lingual surface. Cingulum is present only in anterior teeth. So this bulk as you can see is the cingulum and present only in anterior teeth. Now what is a ridge? A linear elevation on the surface of the tooth is known as ridge. You can see there are four types of ridges. The triangular ridge, the triangular ridge is the ridge that is found on the occlusal surfaces of the premolars and molars. It descends from each cusp tip towards the center of the posterior tooth. This is known as triangular ridge. Now what is a transverse ridge? It is the union of two triangular ridges. What is an oblique ridge? It is the most prominent ridge that goes obliquely. It is present on the permanent first molar. Now, what is a cervical ridge? It runs mesiodistally on the cervical third of buccal surfaces of the crown. Lobe. It is one of the primary section of formation and development of crown. All anterior teeth and the first premolars are formed by four lobes. So this is one, two, three, and four. and the second premolar and first molars are formed by five lobes so 1 2 3 4 5 now what is the fossa a fossa is a depression or concavity on the lingual surfaces of the anterior teeth and occlusal surfaces of the posterior teeth so this is an anterior tooth and the lingual portion there's a depression over here this is the lingual fossa this is a premolar and this triangular shaped depression is the triangular fossa and this is a molar which has a central fossa a fossa is named according to its location or shape as we discussed the lingual fossa the triangular fossa and the central fossa moving on to sulcus sulcus is a long depression or valley on the occlusal surface formed by inclines of adjacent cusps or ridges now these are the cusps and the ridges that come and form a depression over here which is very long this is known as sulcus now what is a groove it is a shallow linear depression on the surface of the tooth developmental groove is a shallow groove or the line between the primary parts of the crown or the root and supplemental groove is less distinct and does not mark the junction of the primary part pits pits are the pinpoint depressions located at the junction of the developmental grooves Now these points that you can see here are known as pits. Now what are mammillons? Mammillons are the three rounded protuberances found on the incisal surface of the newly erupted incisors. The three rounded protuberances you can see are known as mammillons. So let's summarize what all we learned today. We learned about parts and anatomy of tooth. We learned about crown, root, enamel, dentine, pulp, etc. 
Then we learnt about surfaces of anterior and posterior teeth in detail, including the mesial, distal, lingual, palatal surfaces. We also learnt about line angles and point angles of anterior and posterior teeth in detail. Then we learnt about landmarks of the tooth, the definitions and images of cusp, tubercle, cingulum, ridge, fossa, groove, sulcus, pit and mammalons. You can find the link to Google form which has MCQs related to this topic. You can attempt those MCQs and find out how much you can answer and how much you learnt about this topic. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you liked it and if you do, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell for updates regarding new videos. See you in the next video. Till then, stay healthy and have an amazing week.